Franz Wagner and Germany fall short of reaching the gold medal game by the ghost of game seven. Still haunts Franz Wagner, but maybe in a way you don't think. It's time for Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And you are indeed Locked On Magic. Today is August 8th. It will be August 9th, 2024. My name is Philip Rossman-Reich. I'm the senior writer over at orlandomagicdaily.com. Of course, follow me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, Franz Wagner struggles in Germany's loss to France. Why? What that says about him and the ghosts of Game 7. We'll talk about all the narratives surrounding Franz Wagner coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. No matter when you listen to us, whether it's first thing in the morning, whether it's right when we upload, we truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA to search for Locked On and the team you're looking for, the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Today's episode of Locked On Magic is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. With the Olympics winding down, we're hitting the doldrums of the NBA calendar, but FanDuel still has the hookup with all customers getting a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. The beginning of the game on Thursday, I think today's Thursday, Thursday, uh, the beginning of the game on Thursday between Germany and France had all the makings of a repeat of what we saw last Friday. Germany raced out to an early lead. Franz Wagner was aggressive, getting downhill to the basket and getting the shots that he wanted. Germany built an early 10-point lead and started to silence that raucous crowd in Paris. But of course, that's not how the game went. By now, you probably already know the result. France defeated Germany by 4, 73 to 69. You also probably know that Franz Wagner was noticeable by his absence. He scored seven points on three for four shooting, including a three-pointer, by the way, uh, in the first quarter of the game, and then did not score again until the very last moments of the game, hitting a humongous three, I might add, to get to 10 points and cut the deficit down to two about a minute to play in the game. He did also have a great rebound opportunity, but he was unable to fully secure possession, fell out of bounds, ball trickles out of bounds with him, turns the ball over with about 12 seconds to play, and France was able to hold on for the win. There is a lot to say about this, and we're going to get into some of the big long-term implications, but I want to start by looking at the game itself by asking some some real questions about whether this was a Franz Wagner issue or whether this was a, a Germany issue. You can see it, I'm tagging this the whole episode as the ghost of Game 7. And that's going to be the theme of our episode today. We're going to talk a lot about Game 7. I'm sorry, we have to talk about Game 7 because unfortunately, this is now part of the narrative with Franz Wagner. I don't want it to be, you don't want it to be, but it is. Until he proves otherwise, until he steps up and has a big game in an elimination-style game, kind of like he did on uh, on Tuesday, by the way, against Greece, which we talked about extensively, um, this is a narrative that's going to follow him. And we'll talk about the ways this game was different in a moment. But I want to start by crediting France with their defense. Germany, as we've talked endlessly about on this show, is a team. They know how to play off each other. They know their formula for success. And France did an incredible job breaking that formula. But by the same token, I think they also used Franz's instincts against it. And we'll, again, we're going to talk a little bit about how this game differed from Game 7. But... They did a really good job making sure Franz Wagner could not get downhill. Every time he got into a screen and roll, his pet play, the plays that that he relies on to get shots, 
Every time he came across the screen roll, it was either a straight switch to put Victor Wembenyama on him, which actually Wagner was looking for. He attacked Wembenyama twice off the dribble and scored on him in the opening parts of the game. Franz Wagner was hunting for Victor Wembenyama. I want to make this really clear. Franz Wagner was doing star stuff earlier in the game because he was hunting the best defender on the floor and scoring on him and, and, and playing at his pace. But France, to their credit, switched their defense up. They started hedging and, and blitzing screens a lot more to keep Franz out of the paint. They put a player at the nail and dared Franz Wagner to pass the ball, which guess what? He did. He slipped the ball to Daniel Tice. He slipped the ball to one, of the, to one of the rollers. He kicked the ball out to a shooter. And either the shot didn't go down, or they turned the ball over, or they made a mistake, or they somehow slowed the game down to allow France's defense to get back into it. Franz Wagner scored 10 points on 4 for 10 shooting. Um, he was 1 for 6 from 3, or 2 for 6 from 3. It was a rough game. But it was also a game where, by design, France was trying to get the ball out of his hands. And so, this isn't just a Game 7 issue, because... I'll sit here and say it. I didn't think Franz played poorly. I think that he has to find a way to be more aggressive, be more assertive, look for shots more. Like he's still second on the team in shooting, but it's still a big, big complaint among Magic fans that Franz Wagner does not get enough shots. Some of that is Franz. And one thing I think we need to see Franz Wagner elevate to is someone who is going to look for his shot. Someone who is going to press the issue when the team is struggling, knows that he's the one that has to kind of get them out of it. And look, I, I'm not going to sit here and, and I'm criticizing Franz, but I'm not going to sit here and say Franz was making bad decisions. He made a lot of good decisions in this game. The shots weren't there for him. He was trying to get others involved, knowing if they made their shots, if he made the right play, the opportunities would swing back to him. That's what stars do. And look, Victor Wembanyama and his team won, but you watch Victor Wembanyama in this game. He was four for 11, I think, from the floor. He was settling for a lot of threes and some of his shot selection, honestly, was just like, I looked at it, it as like, this is a guy who doesn't know what a good shot is yet. It's like rookie Paolo Bancaro. If you remember those episodes during Paolo's rookie year, I'd say Paolo's taking a lot of bad shots, but that's okay. He needs to learn what a good shot is. And he's still learning, but has gotten a lot better at his shot selection. Franz, his nature isn't to score. That's just not who he is. His nature is to make the right play. And what Team Germany needed from him, especially with Dennis Schroeder struggling and, and Dennis Schroeder being the only other player really that can create off the dribble, they needed Franz to, to be a little bit more assertive, to, to coax that assert assertiveness out of him. And that, to me, is still the... Is, that, to me, is the big storyline of this game. France had a defensive game plan. They made a defensive adjustment. And Franz... I don't want to say he didn't know how to beat it, but didn't feel the rhythm of the game or took himself out of the game offensively as a scoring threat to the point where Germany didn't have any other options. They didn't go back to him. They didn't run a lot of stuff for him because he wasn't figuring out how to attack this specific defense. I would note that some of this don't be concerned about. A, the kind of defense Franz Wagner was getting thrown at him in this game offensively is the kind of defense that Paolo Bancaro sees on a nightly basis. The double, the triple teams, it's hard to know how to handle this. And frankly, I think Contavious Caldwell Pope's probably a better player than Matthias Obst. I think Jalen Suggs, while not the playmaker, certainly, is probably a better player than Dennis Schroeder. Uh, Germany has no player like Paolo Bancaro. Wendell Carter is a good outlet, both as a shooter, certainly as a better shooter than Daniel Tice. The Magic, and on top of that, teams aren't going to be able to park a big in the paint for more than three seconds the way that France is able to in, in the Olympics. The stuff with FIBA is not one-to-one. -one. Even the shooting guys, like I've seen this point be made. Yes, Franz has not shot the ball great this tournament, but also... It's a different basketball than the NBA. They use a different material. And the three-point line is shorter. The floor is, the court is actually shorter, both width and length. The NBA is a little bit different. 
So this is not a one-to-one comparison. And the lanes that Franz Wagner thrives on are going to be there in the NBA that aren't in FIBA. There's a reason why Franz was more successful in the NBA than in college, because in college they can sit in the paint and zone up too. Having said that, we all recognize that you need a little bit more from Franz Wagner. And it's not just because he signed a max contract. For the Magic to get where they need to go, for Franz to get where he needs to go as a player, they need a little bit more. They need a player to take that last step. And that's where we leave Franz Wagner after this loss. Because unfortunately, we do have to talk about Game 7. Unfortunately, we do have to talk and say, well, what's gone wrong in these two pressure-packed games where we're sitting here asking ourselves, can we get a little bit more from Franz Wagner? The ghost of Game 7 is going to haunt Franz Wagner, and so we need to talk about it. We'll chat a little bit about the differences between what we saw from Franz Thursday to what we saw from Franz back in May in Cleveland, and why they're actually two very different things. We'll talk about that, and I will pose a question to you that I put on Twitter and will pose again in the comments. I'll pose a question to you about what we want from Franz Wagner. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. But first, today's episode of Locked on Magic is brought to you by our friends over at BetterHelp. I know I am recording this not an hour after the end of that crazy USA-Serbia game, I'm a little drained emotionally. Like, I like I am, like, like, you get into those games, you get into those atmospheres, you get into the pressure. I'm a Team USA fan. I want my country to do well. I wanted Germany to do well. It's emotionally draining. And so we need to find ways to help us take care of ourselves, to take care of our emotions, to kind of replenish ourselves. And finding something that replenishes your energy, that is so important in life. And that can be one of the most difficult things to do. So no matter, no matter what you do to replenish your energy, make sure you take time for yourself. And I can tell you, there is no better time spent on yourself than than having someone to talk to through therapy. Whether it's regulating your emotions, whether it's dealing with a major crisis in your life, whether it's just having someone to talk to, to just ch- check in on yourself, to give a different perspective on yourself. Therapy is so beneficial. I know I've benefited from therapy throughout my life for a number of reasons. It's something that I value very much. It's something I look forward to, honestly, in my week. If you're thinking of starting therapy, you should give better help a try to dip your toe in the water at the very least. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Never skip therapy day with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on NBA. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic your first listen of the day or whenever you're listening to us. We appreciate that. For your next listen, enjoy the Locked On NBA podcast. There is no offseason in the NBA, and Locked On NBA provides daily basketball analysis from national and local experts in 30 minutes or less. No one keeps you as informed and entertained as Locked On NBA. Available on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. It's all part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It did not take very long for me and for the wider internet to ask a very brutal question. And frankly, it is an unfair question to ask. I will fully admit this. Uh, I am someone who does not hold game seven against Franz Wagner um, for a number of reasons. I'll talk about some of them here in a minute. Um, I don't hold that against him. The Magic are not there without him. Everyone has a bad day. Jalen Suggs was just as bad. And the Magic are always going to find find it very difficult to win when two of their three best players did not play up to standard. And, and you know, that's that's what happened in game seven. It's one game, one game as a toss-up. And 
you know, we'll, again, it's all about, to me, it's all about how you respond. And as I've talked about throughout the course of the Olympic tournament, Franz Wagner has responded. Uh, he has looked, uh, looked in cr- so much better. But obviously, this is another loss. Another difficult loss. And every season is going to have a, diff- it's going to, most, you know, if the Magic are doing this right, there are going to be a lot of seasons with difficult losses ahead. Um, there are going to be a lot of seasons still that end on down notes, on soul-searching notes, where we ask ourselves a lot of big questions. And that's okay. That's what happens when you get eliminated, when you think you have a chance to win. You start asking very big questions about yourselves. And how you answer those questions ultimately determines whether you advance further. And while Franz Wagner is about to turn 23, he is not someone anybody should make conclusions on. He will be back in big game situations. Having said that, Thursday afternoon, evening, whatever whatever it is, Thursday was the first time since game seven we saw Franz face this adversity. It's the first time since that one for 15 showing in Cleveland that we saw him in a pressure situation and how he would perform. And undoubtedly, it is impossible, especially after the way he struggled, 10 points, 4 for 10 shooting. It's impossible not to draw comparisons and ask ourselves, what did Franz learn? Now, I would, as I argued in my last episode after the win over Greece, Franz has actually learned a lot. Uh, he had a bad, you know, he, I, he had a bad game in a lot of ways against Greece. And Germany had a bad game. And he stepped up and made some big plays to ensure that they won. That was an elimination game as much as this was an elimination game. So I I don't weigh either more or less. France had an awesome game plan. I want to reiterate that. France had a really good game plan that they executed well. And Franz Wagner, for his part, read that game plan well. And did his best to help his team win. I want to make this really clear because I actually went back and watched all 15 of those shots from game seven. In both instances, Franz Wagner did not stop trying. Yes, he might have gotten frustrated and got, certainly got a really frustrated in game seven, more so than he did in this game, which I think is a positive step forward as well. You can you could see the frustration on his face on some of those misses in Cleveland that you didn't see in Paris. Uh, this time around. But he didn't stop trying. He didn't stop believing. He didn't stop trying to do what his team needed him to do. But the point I want to make here is that Franz Wagner's too important not to be involved. And I think the mistake of Thursday's game is that either Franz took himself out of the game by becoming more of a passer, by trying to be more of a playmaker. Or Germany took him out of the game by not finding ways to get him shots. And look, some of that is the nature of FIBA play. Some of that is the nature of the differences in defenses. It's a lot easier to try and set Franz up. Some of that is Franz Wagner has to diversify his offensive game. His offensive game is still so reliant on him getting to the basket that when that door is closed, Hey, he's like, look, he's very good at knowing, okay, this isn't there. I'm going to kick it back out and reset the offense. He's very good at that. That's a good thing. I don't want that to go away. But being able to keep a defense off balance with a mid-range jumper, missed a mid-range jumper, set himself up for a good mid-range jumper over Wembenyama in this game and missed it. I like that shot. I was very happy with that shot. I was like, take more of those shots, please. Franz Wagner does have, and it's not just about three-point shooting, by the way. Franz Wagner has to diversify his game to become the weapon the Magic are ultimately going to need, to become the weapon that can perform in these big games where so teams can't just load up on one thing about him. It's not just about three-point shooting, which, again, is so important too. But Franz couldn't escape this idea. He couldn't escape this, this, this notion that he struggles in big games. He's played so few in his career, and he had big game against Greece in, in Eurobasket, he can perform in big games. 
But now you see defenses changing how they guard him. Now that he's a max player, there is pressure. You can feel it. And you can feel how defenses treat him as well. France understood that Franz Wagner was probably more dangerous to them than De- Dennis Schroeder was. Dennis Schroeder is kind of going to do what he's going to do. But Franz Wagner is someone that they had to lock, close the door and lock it in order to stop him. And again, I want to credit Franz Wagner. He tried to make the right play. He tried to find others, but it's also on him to score. And honestly, I pose this question. I'll go through some, some answers to it here in a minute. I preferred his game in Cleveland to this game in Paris. I'd rather see Franz Wagner go down swinging. I'd rather see him shooting 15, 16, 17 times because that's what his team needs. They need the volumes that he can score than to be kind of a passive player and not involved. This is what we're screaming about for Franz Wagner. Not to be so selfish that he's taking bad shots. I don't think that's in his DNA. But he has to be looking to get himself involved. He has to impress himself in the game. I was frustrated watching Thursday's semifinal, not because Germany lost and not because Franz didn't score enough. It felt like Franz wasn't touching the ball. And it felt like Franz was getting the ball in areas where he couldn't score. When one avenue was closed, Germany didn't try to get him the ball anywhere else. There are no post-ups, which maybe not the best idea. There were no, maybe use Franz as a screener with Schroeder. Use him, as, use him as a roller. Use him as a, as a fader. Get creative with how you get him the ball. Put him in situations where he's maybe kept, you know, the Magic do this really well. They'll run him off, uh, dribble a handoff with Wendell Carter and get him downhill and get him the ball in motion so defenses are already having to backtrack before they get, get the ball to him. This is what we're talking about. And so frankly... Frankly, the ghost of game seven in this instance is probably Franz taking the lesson from game seven and saying, I've just got to make the right play. If I'm producing points, it doesn't matter how much I shoot or score. And that is a great notion. But in big games, in key games, in playoff games, in elimination games, your stars need to show up. And in this sense, and just like in May in Cleveland, in Paris on Thursday, one of Germany's stars, I don't want to say didn't show up, but didn't give the team what they needed to win. And that's really what we're asking now. That's the ghost of game seven. What do we want from Franz Wagner? What do we need from Franz Wagner to be successful? And that's a question I turned over to some of you in some regard. I'll go over that question coming up here in just a moment. But first, today's episode of Locked on Magic is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. I love sports. You love sports. We all love sports. Let's get some ice cream. But here in the summer, especially as the Olympics start to wind down, the sports stop sportsing. We're all waiting for football to start. MLS is kind of on break. NWSL is kind of on break. The WNBA is currently on break. There's just not a lot going on. Sorry, Major League Baseball. You're going on, but we're in Orlando. We don't have baseball. FanDuel, though, lets you keep the sports going whenever you want. Getting you ready with NBA futures like the over-under for Magic wins at 47.5. Right now, your most improved player odds for Franz Wagner are probably better than they would have been otherwise. He is up there on that list. I think he's plus 5,000 to be most improved player. You want to bet on any of the awards and any of the NBA futures, FanDuel has you covered. They let you keep the sports going whenever you want. And all you have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime you are in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. So head over to FanDuel.com and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel is an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. I hope no one found this cruel. I want to make this really clear. I I hope nobody 
found this cruel. But I asked this, but people were talking. Stat News put up the put up the stat box. I was thinking about it too. I asked this question, and it's still open at least until around 10, I think. I think I left it open. But thought experiment, which Franz game would you rather have? Game seven, 10 points, one for 15 shooting. Or the Olympic semifinals, 10 points, four for 10 shooting. For me, as I've said, I think I'd rather have game seven. I think I'd rather have game seven because... The Magic, despite his poor shooting, did not go away from him. Despite his poor shooting, he kept attacking. He kept taking shots that he wants to take. And Evan Mobley, I went back and watched all 15 of those shots this afternoon after the Germany game. Evan Mobley made some great defensive plays. Franz was missing some shots short. Maybe there was a little bit of fatigue involved. Maybe there's certainly a lot of frustration and feeling of that pressure involved. Um, Franz did not have a good game. I'm not going to sit here and say that he did. But I do appreciate that in a game that big, the Magic are all in on Franz Wagner, obviously. He kept shooting. He kept trying to score. He kept trying to do what his team needed him to do. And like I said, I think that attitude was very much at play Thursday. Franz Wagner was still trying to do what his team needed him to do. He wasn't trying to force his way into the paint. Although maybe a few foul shots would have helped him. You know, go just dr- throw your body in straight into Victor, Victor Wimbanyama's chest. You will push, you will bowl him over. You are, Vic, Franz took some hits from Victor and did not budge. Uh, his physicality and his strength is, is much higher now. Like I, I am, I am really excited about Victor, about, uh, I'm excited about Victor, but I'm really excited about Franz Wagner's upcoming season. Like his defense is going to be real. Like people noticed it too. He's, guarding Isaiah Cordinier, he's guarding Nicholas Batum, he's guarding Evan Fournier, he's guarding uh, Victor Wembanyama on some possessions. He was guarding everybody. Like Vic- Franz's defense is going to be awesome this summer, or this season. But I would have rather seen him take more shots. Even though the right play might have been to make the pass, his teammates weren't kind of taken over, weren't taking advantage of the attention that he was getting. And look, again, Paolo's going to absorb a lot of that attention in a way that Dennis Schroeder doesn't. Uh, Contavious Caldwell-Pope is a dangerous shooter. Jalen Suggs is a really dangerous catch-and-shoot shooter. He shot like 40-50% on catch-and-shoot threes last year. He was really good. The Magic are going to be better suited to help Franz Wagner take it, and and the NBA itself is going to be better suited to help Franz Wagner take advantage of these opportunities than FIBA play will. But it comes down to this central question. What are we looking for from Franz Wagner? Like, what are the expectations for him? And I can already sense there is a debate about this, about ultimately what the Magic need from him. Look, he is a second scorer, and he will get, you know, he's going to average 20 points per game this year. I I am very confident of that. Um, He is a better player now than he was back in May, even if the three-point shooting doesn't completely come around. I think he will be a better three-point shooter this year. Um, even though he struggled a little bit here in FIBA play. But are we looking for Franz to be the guy part two? Do we need him to be someone that can take guys off the dribble and get and create his own shot in the same way that Paolo can? The same way that, to some extent, Jalen Suggs can? The answer to that is, yeah, they kind of do. And it's certainly as a max player, as someone that's taking up so much space on, on the salary cap, the Magic do need a secondary ball handler or a secondary creator to help Paolo's job be easier, to help Paolo, um, to help Paolo get easier shots and to relieve some of that playmaking load on Paolo. The Magic need Franz Wagner to be everything. They need him to be a 1B. I'm sorry. And Franz at 22 years old is still figuring it out. And that's okay. By the way, that's okay that he's still figuring it out. We've seen here in these last two elimination games, two of the last three elimination games, because, you know, Greece was an elimination game too that Franz played pretty well in. We've seen in these last two elimination losses, the two sides of what Franz Wagner can be. And how at his young age, He's still figuring out 
which Franz he needs to be. He can be the take 15 shots guy, score 30 points guy. He did that if, did that in game four. Had a really good game six. But he can also be the, I'm going to get you 15, 16 points, but I'm going to suck up so much attention. I'll get you four or five assists and probably another three or four secondary assists or uh, three or four other opportunities to score. What the Magic need to see is Franz learn the balance. And... At the end of the day, what we're really asking Franz Wagner to be is to be a star. However you want to define it, the Magic need Franz Wagner to be a star. And we've talked, I've talked a lot about this in the context of Paolo Banker. Because Paolo is just so clearly a star. He he can't be anything else. We talked endlessly about that in the draft process. He can't be anything but a star. That is how his game is built. He is not a supporting player. He's got to do some supporting things and get better at supporting things, but he is not a supporting player. He is a give him the ball, let him go to work type player. He will make passes. He will make plays. He will make the right decisions. He'll get better at that stuff, especially. He'll get better at reducing his turnovers, but he uh, he had demands so much attention. And so much of what we've seen from Paolo over the last two years is him learning what stars have to do. And how stars have to develop and 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 manage and grow a game. Franz hasn't had that pressure. That hasn't been part of his development plan. A lot of what we've seen from Franz is Franz kind of learning where he fits in and learning and learning how to elevate his game. Well, this is how he elevates his game now is learning when to be the scorer, when to be the playmaker. Learning how a game is flowing and saying, I need to take over right now. Or looking at Paolo and saying, we need to take over right now. Magic, two of these guys. What we want from Franz Wagner is obviously for him to be the best player he can be. But what the Magic need from him is to be a true star. And that's where he fell short in these two elimination games. That's the ghost of game seven that he's facing is that he is a very good player. He will play well on big stages, but when the ball is is in his hands and the game is on the line or the season's on the line or the flow of the game is in his hands to dictate what happens next. That's not what he's good at. That's not his strength. And that's where I feel like he has floundered in these two games. Whether he's the playmaker or the scorer, he hasn't understood or hasn't quite grasped or put all the pieces together to be the right player at the right time, the right play at the right time, the right moment to take over at the right time. That's something Paolo is still learning to do, by the way. I don't think Paolo's perfect at it either, but has a better sense of what to do. And this is where Franz has to grow next. It's intangible. I can't sit here and say, oh, shoot this, score this many points, shoot, you know, this field goal percentage. I can't sit here and say that. It's an understanding of how the game is going. In Cleveland in May, Franz probably should have been more of the playmaker. He was getting a lot of the shots that he wanted, but defense was collapsing around him a little bit. Maybe a kick out for three. You know, he did that a few times actually in that game. On Thursday against France, probably need to be more of the score. Try and find a way to force his way into the paint. Try and find a way to get to the foul line. Get some easy shots. Get that defense to back off you a little bit. And these are the things young players have to learn. Because while there is now more attention and more focus on Franz Wagner, he's still really, really young. But now the Magic need their best players to be their best players. Germany needed their best players to be their best players. And while I think Schroeder, Dennis Schroeder and Fra- I think Franz Wagner was probably the best player on the floor for Germany in Thursday's loss, it wasn't enough. Because in a game where your offense is struggling to get anything going, your best players need to lead the offense. And that's where Franz has to grow next. 
I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Match. You can, of course, find me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, Himalay, Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all the fun ways to know podcasts to your podcast enabled listening device. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out OrlandoMagicDaily.com. You can, you can, of course, find us there on Twitter at O Magic daily and for even more orlando magic content be sure to check out my patreon page your orlando magic hub at patreon.com slash orlando magic hub and as always thank you for your support now that you're done listening to me be sure to check out the locked on uh, check out the locked on nba podcast where the season never ends providing national expertise with a local perspective you want to get ready for the gold medal game on saturday between the u.s and france locked on nba is going to have you covered after a wild day of basketball in Paris. I have probably not done justice how good this France-Germany game is by focusing so much on Franz Wagner. It was an excellent game. The USA-Serbia game, also bonkers and nuts. Just a, I hope you got to stay home and watch it. If you haven't, if you're listening to this pod and you haven't watched those games, I'm wrapping up. When I'm done, go, go watch these games and then go listen to Locked on NBA. You can find the link to Locked on NBA in the description below. So, you don't need to search. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That's going to do it for me today, though. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Like I said, uh, next week, we're still kind of in off-season mode, so we're still doing three episodes per week. Uh, but next week, we will chat We'll chat lessons we learned about the Orlando Magic from the Olympics. We'll still chat a little bit about that, about kind of the takeaways from the Olympics for us. We'll talk about what comes next for the Orlando Magic, you know, how they continue developing and building their roster. And we may do some locked off magics here as we wait for the NBA season, season to begin. NBA schedule should be out in the next couple of weeks or so. So we have that to look forward to as well. So still lots to come here on Locked On Magic this summer, even with the basketball fading away to obscurity here for a little bit. But until then, have a great weekend, everyone, for Orlando Magic Daily and Locked On Magic. This has been Philip Rossman, right? We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked On Magic.